I get up and I put my hands in the air and admit that it was all my fault. <laughs> hello, hello! Oh, there she is! It's been a while. Let me quickly tell you a story about this bike. This is Maid Marian II and it's the bike I cycled around the world in. Well, the bike I cycled the second three quarters in. This here is Maid Marian I. There she is up there. And there's her back wheel. Yeah, we kind of had an altercation with a car in America and came off second best. But that's a different story. The rest of the ride actually went quite well. Amazing, isn't it? May have taken the wrong road again. Here I am in Pisa, the hilly bits in France now. After I'd finished cycling around the world, I was so skint, I was just having to sell everything and anything I could just to pay bills and buy food. And to be honest, the biggest thing of value I owned was Maid Marion II. A good friend of mine, Stephen Lloyd, he bought Maid Marion II and he said to me at the time, Sean, if you ever want her back, I will sell her back to you for what I paid for it. And a few months ago, that happened. And Stephen, thank you so much, mate. So why am I telling you the story? Well, although Maid Marion is beautiful and I absolutely love that bike, she doesn't come without her problems. And her problems are because I made some terrible decisions in designing her. The first bad decision I made is I decided to cycle around the world on 23C tires. 23C. I don't even think they use 23C in the Tour de France anymore. The other bad decision I made is I decided to go for rim brakes instead of disc brakes to save 50 grams. I sweat 50 grams in about four and a half minutes. So anyway, when I bought her back from Steven, I decided to rectify those problems and put bigger tires on and fit her with disc brakes. Thanks so much. Sure. Good job, guys. Good see you, mate. See you uh, when I break another bike. Sure. See you later. I often seem to make these silly decisions because, well, the monkey in me tells me to. So I have two personalities, the terrier and the monkey. The monkey is creative, breaks things, inquisitive. I hope I spelled that right. Pushes me to try new things, makes me use my hands. If I don't use my hands in life, if I don't make stuff, I get really agitated. And crucially, the monkey also comes up with ideas. And they're not always good ones. The terrier just does one thing, chase things. The problem is, if I'm a monkey for too long, I then get really frustrated and agitated because I've got nothing to sink my teeth into. And if I'm a terrier for too long, then I just get burnt out. So I have to feed both animals. And choosing big scary goals is the perfect way I get to do that. So this leads me on to the c**ps I made during my first attempt at Iron 102. The first thing that could have been better is my route. The swim lake was incredible, absolutely beautiful and amazing. But it was a bit of a faff to get to the lake and then get back from the lake to on the bike. And also, it was just freezing cold. I know it was only about 15, 16 degrees. Cold today. But at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, that was just too cold for me to handle. And then the cycle route. The idea with the cycle route was to start at the lake, head south, do a couple of laps around the plains of the River Dee, and then cycle back via the lake, and then all the way to my house over there. This bit was pretty good. I was pretty happy with that bit. It was nice and flat, a bit undulating, really quiet roads. But this bit, cycling from the lake back to my house, I had 400 meters of climbing in 16 miles. It was so hilly, there was busy roads with big trucks. I shouldn't have done that. But why did I do that? Because I wanted to finish my bike ride at home. Because the monkey said, I wanted it to be continuous, and if I go home, I'll get to see my family. But it just took its toll on my legs. It was a terrible idea. And then the run. Wow, where do I start with the run? The run was going to be two laps from my house. Bit of trail, a bit of road, but really it was so hilly and it was really uneven underfoot. And there was a bit that was so steep, 
I even had to use a rope to go either down or up it, depending which way I was running. The idea is when I'm going down, if it's slippery, I can just hold on this. The other thing that wasn't ideal was the time of year I started. I started on the 12th of July. I'll admit that it was a terrible idea. Another big one that I asked myself is, was I fit enough? Whoa, the ego in me says, of course I was. I've swum the length of Britain. But truthfully, maybe I was just a bit short. Maybe I was actually miles short. When we fail, well, it's not a failure. It's only a failure if you didn't learn anything. I like to call it a hiccup. I've even got a bit on my website that's called hiccups. <laughs> lots and lots of hiccups. So now I know the mistakes I made. Route selection, time of year, and fitness. I can hopefully work on that and come back even stronger. Better actually go for a run because it's a nice day.